<laughs> All right, hi everybody, welcome. Let me take this off and we get started. We're gonna put it <laughs> here. Oh, it's gonna be one of those days. <laughs> welcome you guys, thank you for so much for joining us today. My name is Nikki, the community education coordinator here at the North Carolina Zoo. Um, all right, before we get started though, I know, just rip off the band-aid guys, get those boring rules over. So you guys are muted just to make everything so much easier for all of us. Uh, but I do want to interact with you guys. So if those of that have joined us before, we're, I'm gonna be asking you guys, we're gonna be playing a game. So I'm gonna be asking you guys lots and lots of questions. You're gonna be doing lots of guessing. So where do you put your answers to my questions? So those that have joined us before, go ahead and type them in where you should be putting them. Make sure everybody's out there awake and listening. <laughs> we can listening. How's everybody? Are everybody's hibernating? Chat. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Oh Where are God, we? Chicken, chicken, chicken. I was getting worried. I thought maybe you guys had gone and hibernated for the winter. All right. All right. If you have questions for me, um, and my, I got, I got Chelsea and I got Megan here and I got Beth and Steve helping out. So if you have questions for us, put those in the Q and A box for us, will you? All right. Let's get started. So today we're going to learn about animals in winter. Did you guys ever wonder what animals do when it gets cold? So let me ask you guys, what are the three, there are three main ways that animals are able to survive the cold, that winter cold. Can you guys think of those ways? Let's see if you guys have any guesses of how some different ways that animals can survive in the winter. Any guesses? Chelsea's helping me monitoring the chat, so just <laughs> Gotta give me a minute to type. I know. Oh, so, Joey says sleep. My sleep. Favorite. Yep. There you go. That would be mine if I could. Absolutely. <laughs> Any other ways? <laughs> you look. You look for pecs. Oh, April <laughs> says hibernate or dormant. Hibernate or dormant. Right. That's that sleep. We'll put those under the sleep. Ish, and we'll and talk Amy about. says migrate. Migrate. Yep. Okay. Those are two of the three. We got one more. Joey says long fur. But long fur? Oh, yeah, you're getting in it. What do we do? Do we migrate? Some people do. <laughs> it's just no birds. <laughs> or do we sleep all winter? So what do we do when it starts turning cold? Charles turning cold. Says, Get a thicker coat. <laughs> there you go, Charles. Absolutely. We deal with it. We have adaptations that we learn to deal with it, right? So, right. So we sleep it away. We move away from it or we just deal with it, we're designed for it, right? So those are kind of the three main ways we survive. So we're gonna kind of play a game. You wanna get, give me a bear with me for a second? Uh -uh. <laughs> <It's downstairs. laughs> All right, let's see if I don't hurt myself or anybody else in the process of setting this up. All right, there we go. Make sure we can all see this. All right, Yay. so there's our three things. They got a long winter's nap. <laughs> we got to move it, move it, right? <laughs> or migrate. <laughs> or you're designed for, you're dealt, you have adaptations, all kinds of cool ways to be able to survive the winter cold. All right. Can you guys see that okay? Can we see it? All right. Give me a thumbs up. Yes, no, whatever, on nothing. And I should have, did not prepare well for this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I know, it's shocking. <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right, so these are your three choices, guys. I'm going to hold up an animal, and it might be a live animal. We'll mm -hmm. never know. We might throw that in for you. You're going to tell me if you think it belongs in. You can just tap, put in chat, nap, move, or deal. We'll, we'll do deal instead of design. All right, so if you think that animal takes a nap, moves, or deals or hangs out and deals, right? I guess before we should talk about, so <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. So first animal guys, you ready? Here it comes. Dun, 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 dun. What do you guys think? Put in the chat. What do you think this bird, the horned puffin does to survive the winters and the cold? Says move. Move. Well, she also says move. Wesley move. says deal. Deal, move, deal. Move, right? Says deal. right? 
move deal. It's actually, you're kind of right, kind of in the middle. <laughs> so they kind of migrate. They come to land during the, the breeding season. So in the summer months, they come to land, lay their eggs, raise their chicks, and then they go out to ocean. So they migrate it out to the sea. And scientists don't, aren't 100% sure what they do out there, but they just live and they deal with the cold and the oceans out there for most of the year. So they do a little bit of both. So they can migrate out and migration doesn't mean north, south. It can mean they're going east, west, they're going down a mountain and then we'll meet another animal, how they do it too. It's a little bit different. So it doesn't mean just flying south for the winter. It can be flying or moving away because what do all these have in common? Why do we do these? Why do they take a nap? Why do they move? Why do we have to deal with it? What do you guys think? Why do they have to do that? Why do they do that stuff? Because <laughs> it's what? No, I made nice no. little, look at my, <laughs> my nice design. <laughs> Should give it away. Did so you make it look like it's dripping because it's like, supposed no, like, to look so like it's, icicles. It's awesome. It's pretty cool. Steve <laughs> <laughs> says nice eyes design. Thanks. Nice eyes. So, you know, all your eyes. Oh, do I think <laughs> survive winter? Right, survive winter because right, it's colder in most places. Also because there's less what? Why do birds leave the north and go south? Why do they do that? What's what is there less of? I should say. To, in order to survive. One of those things I need to survive, that we all need to survive. <laughs> it's always that the awkward silence. I need to, well, they, they type, so there's less of this in the winter time. Maybe not so much for us, but for most animals, <laughs> a lot of the times. It's warmer. Yeah, so they want to move to warmer climates because why can't they stay up? In the What's cold. missing? Right. What's what? Charles says they can't tolerate it or less food, water, shelter. Exactly. Right. Some of them can't handle the cold. Some, but most of it's because the food resources, the things they need to survive. I have moved on. Right before you start. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give up time. Sorry. I'm not good at that awkward silence. I need to fill it. <laughs> it's out of my nature. So that's what they're doing. So they're going out to the ocean where there's more fish and there's more access and it's for them, it's sheltered. It's safer for them out in the ocean. So they are designed for dealing with it. Hi, the <laughs> And it's because they have, they can handle those cold Arctic waters. They actually have super, super thick. I wish you guys could feel this, but they, you can kind of see how deep my wow. finger goes in there. That's how thick their feathers are. They have a nice layer of blubber and so keeps them super, super warm to be able to deal with those cold waters. So very well adapted for it. All right, our next animal. <laughs> My magnets are sticking together. Here we go. Aww. Or his other name, Whistling Pig. <laughs> Whistle Pigs. Mm, oh yeah, so nap. what is that, nap? Okay, anybody else? Uh, Charles says hibernate. Hibernate, yep. Says nap. nap, yep. You guys are right. Take a nice long winter's nap. So when we say hibernate, are they actually sleeping? What do you guys say? Are they really just sleeping? Kind of like when you do at night. Do they, are they sleeping, sleeping, or is it something a little bit different? What do you guys think? <laughs> I feel like I'm on top of you. <laughs> it feels weird. really weird. <laughs> Not sleeping. Right. They're not sleeping. What hibernate means, they're not really sleeping. They're going into what we call a torpor, is the fancy science word, which basically it means your metabolism just decreases rapidly. So your heartbeat goes down, your breathing goes down, your temperature, your body temperature goes down. And so it's really kind of neat. So if you think about it, if you are in true hibernation, you're doing about what is that, 0.5% or 5% of your regular metabolism. So if your heart beats, let's say your heart beats 60 times in one minute, if you're in hibernation, your heart would beat three times in that minute. So just think about that for a minute. <laughs> Every 20 seconds, your heart would beat. That's kind of crazy to think about. So they're going into this deep, 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 not really sleep. <laughs> it's not asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd say because... What is it? 
Steve says, nice math. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So they are going into that deep kind of not really asleep because they're they're everything's just shutting kind of down, but it's still there keeping them alive. Um, so yeah, so it's a little bit different. And some of them are better hibernators than others, like woodchucks and ground chucks are kind of those true hibernators. Wood woodchucks and ground chucks. <laughs> ground chuck is something you eat. That's not right. <laughs> Sorry. So woodchucks actually do a tree. So they literally will, they almost look dead. <laughs> I mean, they don't move. They pretty much are asleep almost the whole winter. Whereas other animals that kind of hibernate might wake up periodically through the winter. So they're not really true hibernators. They don't truly sleep, but they go through what they call torpor. And torpor you can come in and out of. Um, some animals do it overnight and wake up the next day. Like, Charles made the observation that they enter a dormant state when dormant that good metabolism word. and heart rate go down. Right, that's a good way of saying. Thank you, Charles. Dormant. The dormancy is a good one. Absolutely. All right. Let's see our next one. How about this guy? Andy. <laughs> <Poor girl. laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? Where does the white-tailed deer do they nap, move, or deal? Joey and Wesley say deal. Deal, deal. Yep, you're correct. They're designed for it. Absolutely. So they are in the deal category. And they can deal with it very well because of what? What do they have? This beautiful fur. Nice. And what's really kind of cool, it's actually got like kind of like straws, there's air spaces in the fur and that actually allows them to trap warm air next to their skin so they stay nice and warm for the winter. And they're able to kind of use those feet and paws to kind of dig through the snow and get to the stuff they need to eat. So they're very well designed for dealing with winter and don't really have to move. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, here we go. This one's a fun one some people don't always think of. you guys think? They nap, move, or deal? Wesley says nap. Joey says deal. Says deal. Nap. Says nap. Lucy yep. says move. Well, this one. Oh, I forgot about about What's that? I forgot about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. They're actually kind of in, in the middle. So again, when I said about migration, it doesn't mean going all the way north, it can be digging down deeper. So they actually will dig down deep below that frost line and they can go down maybe even six feet deep to get kind of below that frost line, wherever they are. So they do migrate down and then they kind of go into a little bit of a hibernation and kind of sleep the rest of the winter and they kind of cope themselves in a slime layer and that way they won't dry out. And Catherine and says nap because she doesn't see them in the winter. So that's why you don't yeah. see us as they right. go deeper. Because they go deep and they kind of just do go to sleep. So they kind of go and go into that dormant, I like that word dormancy period, but they, they like I said, they make a nice slime layer around them so they won't <laughs> dry out, <laughs> which is pretty interesting. All right, um, let's see. How about these guys? Went a little too close, sorry. <laughs> what do you guys think, bats? What do they do? Nap it, Joe move it, nap. deal it. <laughs> Charles says hibernate, Wesley says move. Right, you guys are both right. They actually, some bats will take a long winter's nap and some of them will migrate. So they're kind of right in the middle, depending on the species. So we have a few species in North Carolina that will migrate, but a lot of them will hibernate, go into caves or into your attics <laughs> and migrate for the hang out for the winter time and kind of go in that dormant, sleeping, deep dormancy period. And they they are one of the true, like the groundhog, the true hibernators, and they go deep, deep into their hibernation and don't really wake up at all, much at all. All right, let's see. Hmm. Should we bring out our, our, our next live animal? Our first, I should say, our Let's first say. one. We haven't met one. <laughs> we well, you're an one. animal, technically. I know. <laughs> well, we've already gone over that. Um, choose my ball. Okay, I would, if that. I had to choose, this would be my way of dealing with winter. <laughs> All right. If you want to go you ahead, I'll do one? one more critter. Let's go. This one should be an easy one. What do you guys think? 
Arctic Turn. What do you guys think? Migrate. And Deal. Says move. Now, says migrate. Joey says move. Right. They like to move and move. And these guys are actually the champion movers. They can go from the Arctic way on the North Pole, travel all the way to the South Pole, and then back again. So 20,000 miles every year they travel and they fly. So they're definitely the champion migrators, that's for sure. All right, you got her? Or should I go get another crit? Get another animal. Get, get I'll go get another animal. Okay, get another animal. Here we go. Oh, this guy. Uh, something a little bit different. I should, there should be a beetle at the end of that too. A ladybird beater or ladybugs as we like to call them. So ladybird beetles, because they are actually a beetle. Joey said teal. Teal. Move or nap. Uh, Paula says nap and move it. Wesley says move. <laughs> uh, Steve says he sees them in his house in the winter. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's where. So, I mean, I guess they kind of do both, but uh, they do kind of take a nap, hibernate. But they will move inside and find a warm, nice nest place, and they do it in big groups, and that way they can kind of keep each other warm. And so they are kind of a napper. And that's why they're moving in your house, Steve, right now. And I see them, I see them in my house and actually in my office too. <laughs> and so they're, they're finding a warm place to kind of go to sleep for the winter time. Are we ready? All right, let me grab this. Okay. All right. What do you guys think this animal does in the winter time? <laughs> She scoots her around. Person, <laughs> she does not. She scoots around. Oh, she just scoots. Mask on. Her person. name is Scoots. That's uh... Uh, Wesley says nap. Joey says nap. Right. They are hibernators, but there's a different word for your cold-blooded friends. So a lot of our warm-blooded friends, they do something called this is called hibernation. But your cold-blooded friends, like Scoots, right? <laughs> yes. Let's get her out. <laughs> So scoots does something called brumation. So it's similar to hibernation, but they're definitely sleeping. And what's really kind of cool is they'll find like um, uh, under a tree or something where there's a big kind of hole underground and they'll go down and a whole bunch of different snakes sometimes will come out and they do something to it. And they call it the fancy science word is a hibernaculum. It's a fun word to say. And so when you have so a place where they, <laughs> reptiles kind of go down and sleep the winter away, or not sleep, I should stop using that word, <laughs> go and just hang out for the winter <laughs> underground. There you go, it's good. Very active. So now obviously she is not gonna go in it because she's, her room is temperature controlled and stays yeah. warm all the time. You wanna talk about her? So Scoots is an Eastern rat snake, uh, really common around this part of the world. Um, <laughs> she likes to say hi. So, you may also hear them call black snakes, but she's not really all the way black. Scoots. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, she's not all the way black. So she does have some patterns in there. Um, she's almost a full adult. Or is she, is she a full adult? Yeah. But when they're young, juveniles will have more of a pattern like she does right here but it's definitely more prominent um and then they can also be different colors so they're not always black so the eastern rat snake can be like a yellowy color or an olive green type color so she's got more of that olive going on she's just beautiful <laughs> right. so um and then also um, so their digestion as is part of why they don't, um, when it's cold, just like we were talking about animals can't find food in the cold, right? But these guys, their digestion slows down so much in the cold that they actually don't eat because if they do, the food just sits in their tummy and makes them sick. So, um, but not here, here, as Nikki was saying, they are, um, their, their, their room is extra warm Super huge. and they get food. <laughs> well, they eat all year round. But some of them, I think, some of them will slow down a little bit occasionally, but yeah. in the winter time. Yeah, where, where are you going? Face the camera. She's very active. 
Do you guys have any questions about Jones? Oh, there she goes. She's posing. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> what do snakes eat? So uh, they. Uh, oh my god, my brain just. I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mice, rats, uh, small rodents a lot of times. Um, yeah, that's usually their much, main diet. Anything that'll, that's anything big as their head or smaller, and they can catch. <laughs> yeah, anything that they Birds, can catch and get. Frogs, um, other snakes, lizards, anything, yeah. yeah. Not terribly picky. But they, they are carnivores, so <laughs> they do, um, yeah, they do like that meat. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you going? So well, other times, if Scoots was in the wild, so she would go down underground with a bunch of other either rat snakes or other snakes. So many times, even copperheads or anything like that, and they'll all just snuggle up together in a like in a hole underground. And that's that that word hibernantium. Don't you guys love how far away from me she is? That's all muscle. I know. She's got so much muscle in this She's got, body. Like a 12 pack of it. Right? right? <laughs> yeah, geez. Yeah, I don't know what is they like about that. that it's lines. it's entrancing. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Thanks, kids. <laughs> oh now you're coming back up. Well, yeah. you've got both of my hands wrapped up, yeah. so <laughs> you can't jump. Would you like help? Well, <laughs> yeah, she's gonna go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. She, she, oh, that was fun. <laughs> I was this not anticipating cup. that, Scoots. I'm sorry. The snake cup. Yeah, I did get a snake cup. She knows you. She doesn't want you to leave her. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, great. So, your warm blooded animals do the hibernation. Your cold-blooded animals kind of do that brumation, that fancy science word. So, all right, let's go with this guy. What do you guys think? Nap it, move it, deal with it. Wesley says deal, Joey says move. All right, you guys are both right. Kind of do both. They actually will migrate a little bit south, but where they're found way up in the Arctic, moving south it's still pretty cold and still a lot to deal with and so they will move like 600 miles or so um 1200 miles a year which is pretty cool that they do they walk that much and so they'll move south where there's still a little bit of food but a lot of the times when they move south they're still eating like lichen which is that stuff that kind of grows on rocks and trees um and then they have to dig and find different stuff so they still have to deal with it and they're very good at dealing with it I'll put them in the middle. This is their footprint of a caribou. Does anybody know the other name that they call Positive caribou? Positive. Give you a hint. Oh, Wesley says reindeer. There you go. I didn't have to give you a hint. <laughs> I was going to tell you they pulled Santa sleigh, but <laughs> I didn't have to. So, caribou or North America or if you find one kind of behind a fence, it's called a reindeer. So, or if you go to Europe, <laughs> I mean, you just hear close. Or if you're Santa Claus, yeah, you're, right. <laughs> you're Santa Claus it's a reindeer. <laughs> so they have these big feet that kind of can splay out like a kind of like a snowshoe. So they're very well adapted for walking around on snow and ice and for swimming, actually. These actually work as really well as pedals. All right, let's see what else we got. Ooh, here's one. This one's actually pretty cool. Joey says deal, Charles says hibernate, Paula says move it and nap. <laughs> nap. All right. So these are those, the brewmaters, right? So these are your brewmaters, your nappers. They will go way down. They'll, well, they won't go way down. A lot of your amphibians will kind of go underground a little bit and kind of get where it's nice. And some of them are really good at digging and they'll go below the frost line. Some of them aren't so great at digging like the wood frog and they can't go below the frost line. And they're found some of the, in Alaska. So you can find these guys way up north and they get so cold because they can't dig below the frost line. They literally freeze. Here's a frozen one. Wow. 
he's frozen solid, but when spring comes and it warms up, he wakes back up and he comes back to life. He's literally no heartbeat. He's got no breathing, nothing going on in this state, but they're able to survive it because they can produce something in their blood, their system called glucose, stuff we do too, but they are able to produce it. They put it in their cells and it keeps their cells from freezing. And that's what saves them. And they're able to warm up and wake up. They still don't know why, how their hearts get started and all that stuff, which is fascinating stuff. <laughs> kind of nerd out about this stuff. It's really neat. So they are definitely a hibernator, <laughs> which is a pretty cool way of dealing with it. So let's see. Um, oh, this one was probably, might surprise some people. Whoop. They're so pretty. I love that color. Yeah. What do you guys think? Are they nap, move, or deal? Follow the movement. Uh, Joey said move. Move, move, right? Well, see, when I read, I had no idea, but they are migrates. As adults, a lot of times they migrate, but I'm going to put them a little bit closer to the design because in certain life stages, when they're in their younger stage here and here, they're at the bottom of a pond and the leaf litter at the bottom of the pond, continue, continuing to move around and deal and find food. You know, so they, at this age, deal with it. So kind of neat. A lot of insects, different stages deal with it in different ways. Some of them will hibernate or roomy, whatever, as adults or, well, I guess it's called a die pause is what it's called. Fancy word for insects that go into the sleep mode. The sleep mode, we'll say. So yeah, pretty cool. So some of them do it, do that. Some of them in different stages will migrate and some of them are just designed to deal with it. There are some, animals, some insects that still move around during the winter time. So pretty cool. <laughs> All right, uh, that one's too easy. Oh, this one. Yeah, we gotta get challenging. Yeah, I know they know their stuff. What do you guys think what honeybees do? Joey says deal. Deal. Do they nap? Deal. Move. Move and sleep. Move and sleep. Mackenzie says nap. Paul says move and nap. All right. Well, these guys are signed Ooh. for because they are social critters. They do move into their hive, but they use each other for body heat. And so when it's really cold, they'll kind of clump up into a ball. They're still awake, they're still moving around and they're eating the, the food supply that they put in that hive all summer long. And then they will, to heat themselves up, they'll form a ball around the queen, the queen's in the middle, she gets the best heat. <laughs> and so, and then they flap their wings really quick. And the ones on the outside are obviously colder and the ones on the inside get warmer and then they switch. So the ones on the inside come to the outside, the ones on the inside go in. So they take turns kind of heating each other up. Which is kind of neat, right? You really, so they go. You've really thrown them off with that one. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Charles says he thought they all died in the winter. Some of them do. Some of them might not have enough food, right? So they didn't get enough food to get through the winter. So sometimes that does happen. They don't always survive throughout the winter. But if they have enough food and they were able to collect enough food throughout the summertime and the fall, then they should be able to get through the winter. So it's pretty cool. So amazing. But I love that the ball and the keeping each other warm and snuggling together. <laughs> it's cute. All right. Well, I'll do this one since uh, <laughs> he was supposed to come, but he was not cooperating with us. But what do you guys think? What do red tailed hawks do? Do they nap it, move it, deal with it? Wesley says move. They move. Becca says nap. Nap. Paul move, says move. move, move, move. Move it, move it, move it. Says move. move by Greg. Says oh, we got the fancy word, right? Mm -hmm. They actually depends on where they're found. So red-tailed hawks in Canada, maybe northern New York, where I'm from, <laughs> they move it, move it. They get out of there because it's a little bit too cold, not a lot of great food, and they will migrate down to warm like Mexico, um, Northern uh, South America and like that. But some of them, especially ones around here in North Carolina, they'll stay. They, they will stay and deal with it because it's not the winter's art and heart. So they're kind of in the middle like that. <laughs> so they will, some migrate, some stay and deal with it. 
but it's really kind of cool. I'm not sure where you guys, where you're from in North Carolina, but if you're near Pilot Mountain in the spring, or excuse me, in the fall, you can go up there and you can watch the, the bird of prey migration come through. It's really kind of cool. You see all kinds of birds of prey. You see hawks, you'll see eagles, you'll see kites, not the, not the ones on a string. <laughs> um, you'll see lots of vultures. You'll see, um, that I've seen peregrine falcons. Yeah, you'll see all kinds of birds of prey that are migrating south in the fall. So it's a really cool place to see that. All right, uh, let's see. Do, do, do. This one's pretty easy. <laughs> you guys think that one should be. Wesley says nap. Nah, Paula nah. says nap. Right. <laughs> it can be napo. Napo, right. <laughs> right. Lots of napping, right. So unlike the groundhog, these aren't really true hibernators because they will wake up throughout the winter times. A lot of um, mammals will do that. So they'll wake up part, part of the way through. They'll maybe move around. Um, even actually some of the, the snakes and reptiles too, on a warmer day, they'll wake up and move around a little bit, get a drink of water poop and pee, do what they need to do, <laughs> and then go back to sleep in the colder weather. And they'll kind of do the same thing. So they'll wake up, you know, and grab a drink of water. Um, so they're not sleeping the whole entire time. So, but they definitely take a nice long nap. Uh, well, since we're talking about bears, how about this bear? Ooh. What do the polar bears do? Do they hibernate? Do they nap? Move? Or deal? We got, uh, Leslie says deal, Joey says deal. All right. He thinks he's a dealers. <laughs> Absolutely. These guys are the champion dealers. <laughs> like they saw her play in a card game. All <laughs> right. So they're really, really good at dealing with it. Matter of fact, they're super good at it. They have, let's see, bring all the props. <laughs> Thick layer of blubber about that thick, about four inches of blubber. And of course, that thick fur. Do you guys remember what color skin polar bears have? What color skin do they have? <laughs> I know, see we know you do, Steve. <laughs> Charles says black, Jamie right. says black. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see that right there. So that black skin absorbing the heat from the sun, absolutely. So they're super built. Matter of fact, when they run in the winter or they run, they can actually overheat. So they're so good at keeping themselves warm. So just like I tell everybody, don't run. There's no need to run. Yes. <laughs> Running's bad. So true. Don't worry, <laughs> exactly, <Yeah. laughs> that's my motto. Life or death motto. Absolutely. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, we're good, okay. <laughs> We're going on flying through there. I wasn't sure we we're going to get through all these, so I'm excited. How about this guy? How cute is that? Yeah, so cute. Napping, moving, dealing. Mecca mm, says nap. Wesley says deal. deal. Mm. All right. So all some deals, deal, deal, deal. Uh, deal. 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 And nap. Well, they're actually a dealer. <laughs> I feel like they should be in the casino working somewhere. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> so they know how to deal with it. So they stay awake. So they, what they do is they actually change their, their food habits. So in the spring, summer, and fall, they're eating like berries and insects and all kinds of different food that's abundant at that time. And in the wintertime, they switch their diet to mostly just eating other small mammals, like that, things that are around like mice and rats, maybe birds and like that. So they just switch their, their meal pattern around during the winter time, but they're still active during that time. Let's see, this one. Probably most of you guys probably haven't even heard one of these, but I think they're cool birds. Hard to see, mm -hmm. but they're beautiful. I love, I love these. They're in the family called Nightjar. They're probably one of my favorite groups. They're just so cool. Wesley says move, Joey says nap. nap. Paula says move. Move, move, right? Most people think birds migrate. This is only one of the few birds. Steve said, how big are those critters? Not very big. I'm talking about this big, which do you <laughs> want to <laughs> tell you? <laughs> well, this thinking. is one of the few birds that actually can go into that torpor state. So that hibernation state. And so um, hummingbirds can do it, but they just do it 
every night when it gets cold because their metabolism is so high, they don't want to waste that energy. So they kind of decrease their metabolism. And then the next day they wake up and do the same thing. But they can go into a long torpor for so several weeks. Yes. I just know, are those birds flightless? They are not. They are not flightless. They look like it. They literally look like a piece of bark. And they're insect eaters or small, they're, they're carnivores. And it looks like, I worked in this rehab center once with, and they had a whippoorwill in there, which is the cousin. This is the uh, Western version of what we have here in North Carolina, which is the whippoorwill. And they're, they eat on the wing. So they literally fly around and then it looks like these tiny little beaks and then they open it up and it's a giant gaping mouth. <laughs> the first time I saw it I was like, oh my God, it's gonna eat me. <laughs> but they're, they're not big birds anyways, but they're just really cool. I mean, to me, they're just fascinating as anything because they look like bark and they have those big gaping mouths and they fly around catching insects on the wing. It's just pretty cool. But so one of your few birds that can hibernate. Pretty cool. Uh, oh, <laughs> this should be easy. What are you guys seeing these guys do right now? Joey says move. Leslie says move. Charles says migrate. <laughs> I'm going to say. Mecca says nap. Do you guys see them now? Go look out your windows. I bet you you see one. <laughs> because they're everywhere. Because they are a deal. They don't migrate. They kind of hang out. I mean, when I, they were everywhere in upstate New York. So where it's really, really cold and a lot of snow, they know how to deal with it. Because what do you, what do they eat? You know, what do cardinals like to eat? What do they use that thick, thick beak for? Does anybody know what they like to eat? <laughs> that is a, a unique adaptation. Oh, uh, Mecca says seed. There you go. Right. That's why a lot of people put out bird ins or insect feeders, <laughs> bird feeders, <laughs> and they'll come and gladly eat it. So, because they eat mostly a seed diet, that stuff's around all year round. There's seeds everywhere and, you know, berries and stuff like that for them to eat. So, they don't have to move because their diet is there all year round. And they can deal with it because they have. What covered in their body? <laughs> Those feathers. And then they have that extra layer of the fluffy feathers. Down feathers. Good right. job, guys. Down feathers, right. So the fluffy feathers, or a long underwear, I like to call them, mm -hmm. next to the skin that traps air next to their skin that is heated by their body heat, and it keeps them nice and warm. So absolutely adapted for dealing with it. All right, we got a couple more. This one's another easy one. What do they like to do? Wesley says move, Charles says migrate. All right. Uh, Mecca says nap. Nope. <laughs> move it. All right. So they're one of those few that move it, move it, right? So they are migratory butterflies, which is pretty cool. What blows me away is let's say there's a butterfly, I'm gonna keep going to New York, I don't know why, <laughs> because I'm dreaming of going home to New York. <laughs> so it flies from New York, it, as it's flying down south, it may stop, lay some eggs along the way and die. And then that egg grows up, becomes a butterfly, goes through the process of metamorphosis, becomes a butterfly and it continues the migration. So what starts, you know, and it's just how they know where to go so it's not the same generation that goes from the south and then that comes back up north. It's like different generations. So it's pretty amazing. So how they know where to go and they go to a certain spot in Mexico and they hang out on these trees and the big clusters. And then they kind of go into a little bit of that uh, dormancy a little bit because they don't really eat much and they just kind of hang out together to kind of keep each other warm. So pretty cool stuff. <laughs> and it's very fascinating stuff. So. All right. How about that? Oops. As I cover up half the name. There we go. I'm doing well today. Mecca says nap. 
He said, who is that? <laughs> Charles said, do you? All right. Wesley said, move. All right. Good guesses. They are a dealer. <laughs> so owls actually don't really migrate. So they stick around and deal with it because they have such, again, thick feathers and they eat all kinds of different, they're not picky about what they eat. So they'll find all kinds of rodents and mice and small birds and anything that they can catch and carry. So they're not picky. And these guys can actually eat, even eat skunks. So, <laughs> but the skunk are sleeping or napping-ish. <laughs> so hard to find in the wintertime, but they find plenty of food and they have those thick feathers to be able to keep them warm. And my favorite part of an owl, it's pretty cool. I mean, they have all these feathers all the way down to their toes. Those look like some pretty good socks. I know, right? they keep you warm, right? And all the way down the legs, it's like pajamas. <laughs> Looks like they wear pajamas. <laughs> pajamas. Yeah. You want to bring our last friend? Sure. Get this out of the <laughs> I don't know if that was real. It was, yep. So um, we get a lot of our birds of prey stuff we you saw, like the wings. I keep saying uh, Paula, but it, it's Liam. It's Liam, right? Yeah, sorry, sorry, Liam. So all these things you see right here, so a lot of birds of prey get hit by cars because they've, unfortunately, they've learned to hunt by the side of the road because people throw their trash. Uh, you know, when they're driving on the car, they throw the trash out. Or just food scraps. Or food scraps, apples, banana peels, that kind of stuff. They get always going to buy out a grade, no problem. But that food attracts mice, small mammals, that kind of thing, things they would like to eat. And so a lot of them get hit by cars. So keep your trash in the cars, guys, is the moral of the story. And so some of them don't survive. And this is how we get the parts and pieces from them. So to me, it's they're continuing to live on to be able to teach people about that. And so now you can understand, keep your trash in your car, all right? And save some things of models. Bye, buddy. <laughs> all right, come on. So everybody, who do we got? What do we get? Do we got Darwin? Yes. Is Darwin? Okay. Yes, this is go. Darwin. He's Darwin. So um, Darwin is a, hold up, I got this. Western Santa Cruz Island giant Galapagos tortoise. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I was looking to look at the I got through that in one one try. Oh, nice. <laughs> um so what do you guys think? What do you think he does? Joey says nap. Yeah. Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he is cute. Wesley said nap. nap. Where's he going, Darwin? Well, this is kind of the He's unusual. So he is from, you know, do you guys know where the Galapagos Islands are? I mean, I know where they are. Is it warm or cold in the Galapagos? What do you think? The Galapagos. Just a fun word to say. Galapagos. Galapagos. He is a Galapagos. Are they warm islands or cold islands? Or somewhere. So, our Galapagos Islands are actually near the equator. So they're way up near the equator, right? So yeah. is it warmer there by the equator? Is it warm or cold at the equator? T says warm. It's warm? Yeah. <laughs> That's one way to describe it. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's warm. So they don't have to snap. So he kind of migrates a little bit. Like I said, migration can be different. So it can be short or it can be long. And so they migrate around their islands, finding where the best food source is in during the, the yeah. winter period. So it's depending on the, different, right. Yeah, depending on the size so, of their island and yeah. Um, yeah. where everybody else is living, <laughs> different things will grow at different times of the year. And Absolutely. He's a herbivore, so he will go for all of those plants and maybe some flowers or grasses, anything he can find. <laughs> Loves the green stuff. Right. It wasn't going to deal with it, but they might read a little bit, right? Yeah. All right. He is cute. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about Darwin? I know, I think you guys, some of our repeats mm -hmm. might have met yeah. him before. Yeah, we might have met him, but he's still, he never gets old. Never. He's pretty awesome. Especially since he's only two and a half. Yeah. 
Yeah. Two and a half years old. Less than three years old. He's got a hundred years to go at least. <laughs> Somewhere in there, yeah. Hopefully, right, buddy? Yeah. Do you guys think he's gonna get any bigger than this? Me think. If you paid attention, if you've seen if you met him before, you should know. Remember his name. Giant. Yeah. yeah. Right. Giant Galapagosaurus. Right. Yeah, so it is in his name. So he's gonna get to be what, three, four, five hundred pounds possibly. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the large males get even bigger than that. Yeah. Well, we don't so, know. We don't think the males are female. We don't. I know. I have, no, I've I not heard. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, so how big is he? So he's about that big. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, you know, hand big. Right. So um, now, um, Beth, or Steve, do you guys know about how much he weighs? I don't know if we know exactly how much he weighs. I can't. So they have access to all the information about our our animals we have at the zoo and our ambassador animals. Yeah, so he's, I would guess, he's not quite a foot long. He's probably a, yeah, not quite a foot. I would say he's about 10, 10 inches or so. So if you got a tape measure or, or a ruler, you can measure that out. And then he's probably on your screen. Probably about eight inches. I'm at home, so you can see how big it is. So his name is Darwin. <laughs> oh, and, and uh, Liam wants to know why when turtles go upside down, can I, why they can't breathe. So th I think that's uh, if they stay upside down for too long. Right. I think they're, the weight of it can actually kind of, you know, just like if somebody were to sit on your yeah. chest, you wouldn't really be able to breathe or take in much air or oxygen. So it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Basically, all of their organs and right. everything shifts yeah. um, where it's not supposed to be. Right. So it, their yeah. lungs are on, on the top. Right. So when they're flipped upside down, all of their other organs kind of fall on top of the lung. Right. So and squish it. Right. Four. So it makes yeah. it hard. So they can flip themselves over. A lot of them can do it, but it's it's a struggle to watch. It's, kind of, it's, it's hard to watch. You always feel sad. Beth says him. that Darwin weighs four and a half pounds right now. Excellent. Okay. There you so go, not dude. Much, almost five pounds. But when he gets full grown, like I said, we will not be walking around like this. No, we'll have to put him on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how well that's going to go either. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> So they used to take them off. Oh, huh. Hmm? Well, Steve was saying they used to take them off the islands and keep them upside down. Oh, yeah. So they can live and be eaten later. Mm -hmm. I think they can breathe, but it's probably a little bit different. It's... For them. And I guess it depends on the turtle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they just don't do well upside down for very long periods. But since they were going to eat them, they didn't really they care about their concerned. well being. <laughs> they weren't concerned about their health and welfare. Like we are with our animals. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't like we it when you guys get flipped. flipped over. No. <laughs> For very long. No. And we would not eat them. Never. But he might try to eat <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah. Because anything with a mouth can buy. Yeah. Do you have any questions <laughs> about Mr. Darwin? Or Miss Darwin? Please don't let us know. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll be going back. Violet with turtles. So okay. some turtles Ooh. around here, it's kind of cool. What they actually do, they can go under the pond and burrow in the yeah. mud, and they can live under that mud all winter long and still be able to take in oxygen through there. But they don't require as much oxygen, so they can survive under there without a lot of oxygen. So pretty cool that they can survive that. Um, Leslie wants to know how old is he? Two and, and a half. half. Right, just a little less than three years old. So he's got a long ways to go. Any other questions, guys? All right. That's it, bye. Bye. <laughs> hey, waves. Look at that. <laughs> it's been way better. I know. So <laughs> I know. Did I miss anything? I'm trying to think. We got through all our, our funny animals. You guys are good. So you yes. knew a lot more. I was surprised by a lot of things I was researching. Like I had no idea that dragonflies migrated. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, what was another one that surprised me? I never thought about worms. <laughs> I'm like, who does? Who sits around and thinks about worms except for a worm scientist? I don't know what that is called. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of cool things that kind of surprised me and always interest me. That I love the fact that some animals can actually be okay with freezing 
and come back to life like that. That is just fascinating to me. But there's a lot of stuff we don't know, which is kind of neat. Like the puffins, what do they do in the winter time? <laughs> she said worst things about worms. That's just <laughs> The robins are going, where did the worms go? And it was so sad. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that was funny. So there's lots of cool stuff we do still don't know. Maybe that's your job, guys. Since you're the you're the interested in animals, obviously you keep coming back and joining us. So maybe that's your your next research project and find out more information about what animals are doing in winter time. So I think that's pretty cool because a lot to me to know. Hibernation is still kind of a question. They're still wanting to learn more information. They're not hundred percent sure how it works and how they do things. Like even with polar bears, they're still wanting more research about how they are able to do it um, because they. Um, uh, and what's kind of neat, interesting, <laughs> interesting point with them. So when do you think their toughest season is? So all these animals, their tough season is the winter when there's not a lot of food around. When is the polar bear's tough season? Something to think about. Is it winter or is it summer that they have to get through and survive? Oh, or Liam and Joey say uh, summer. Yeah, it's the summertime. They need the sea ice to be able to hunt seals. And so their leanest period where they don't find a lot of food is during the summertime. So that is their hardest point. And so that's usually when they're trying to slow down their metabolism a little bit. And so there's a lot of research going on with that and trying to figure out how are they able to maintain some of that body weight when there's not a lot of food to eat during the summertime. So. Pretty interesting stuff, guys. <laughs> I'm a huge nerd about uh, fascinating stuff to learn about. All right, do you guys have any questions about anything other than whatever? <laughs> winter, <laughs> non winter, summer, fall, anything. spring, whatever. Question we'll take it all. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. So, next week is our um, creature connections. So, that is the, the paid one where we get the um, you get to meet us, you get to learn about what some of our animals here at the zoo do in the wintertime. And you'll go to the aquarium and learn about what some of our ocean animals do, because I didn't even touch on that. So I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna join up because <laughs> I wanna learn. <laughs> and then the week after that, you'll meet Megan. She's got a cool program for you guys. And then we're gonna take a break for Christmas. So um, I won't be seeing you <laughs> until next year. And don't forget, guys, to tune in to Nat Geo Wow. Oh yeah. For our um right our North Carolina Zoo series. Yep. yep. Secrets of the Zoo, North Carolina. Saturday, Chris. 10 o'clock. Yep. Every Saturday, 10 o'clock on Nat Geo Wild. PM. PM, yes. Thank you. <laughs> PM at night. Maybe you can stay up that late. <laughs> I'm old, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, take care. And since I won't see you, I'm gonna wish you happy holidays. All right, bye guys, take care.